I was reading an article by Screen Rant titled 10 Things About the Quiet Place Universe That Make No Sense, and I thought it would be interesting to address these points that supposedly don't make sense. Trust me, we've made our own video a while ago talking about issues about a quiet place and things that we also noticed didn't make sense. Let me start off by saying, in case you guys don't know, A Quiet Place is one of my favorite movies so far. But of course, I love monster movies, so it's a given. It's such a wonderfully new concept, and the way it's executed and finding issues with the movie doesn't mean I hated the movie. I think almost every movie in existence has issues. But let's hear what Screen Rant had to say. Now, now, the first point is one that I can totally agree with because I also found myself scratching my tender scalp when certain scenes cropped up and I was baffled as to how the humans were able to get away. Exactly what can't and can the creatures hear? As they pointed out, A Quiet Place sets ground rules. The characters in the movie set ground rules. And there are times, such as when Ebeline Blunt's character is in the house trying to give birth quietly. However the hell you do that, I'm never having children, all the ripping and the tearing, it's freaking gross. And then your flesh triangle is a mishmash afterwards, no thanks. Now imagine trying to undergo what feels like a chest burster coming out from your groin and trying to stay quiet. How the hell? But no worries, her husband prepared for a time like that, but the creature was already in the house when she started. She was whimpering a little bit, and I was wondering how is it that the creature didn't hear her? I don't know, maybe it detected that she was there, but there were quieter sounds that happened in the movie and the creatures were like, shut the hell up. It sounds like you just dropped a goddamn building onto my head. Yet the creature doesn't come barreling through the bathroom door when it hears her whimper. Hmm. And seriously, if the creatures have really good hearing, you know when you're scared and you're trying to hold your breath, but then you have to breathe and then you're breathing a little bit too hard when it's too quiet. How do they not hear that? Whatever, that was something that didn't make sense and I can't really explain that one away. It's not like there were any other noises at the time to distract the creature, so it would have been painfully obvious where the noise of Emily Blunt trying not to give her position away was coming from. The next point is, what about involuntary bodily noises? What they mean is, what happens if you bust a fart? Most people can control this, and sometimes if you hold it in, you can actually hurt yourself, and then you have to get it out some way so your insides don't pop open. But what about burps? Or what about people who talk in their sleep? I know people who talk in their sleep, like full-on conversations with their kidnappers or victims or whatever the hell is going on, because I've heard some interesting things. Some of them just make me not want to ask the person when they wake up because I don't want to become one of those loose ends they have to tie up. But seriously, it's not something that you can control all the time. And even if you do, the person sleeping next to you or in the other room won't be able to hear you, but the creatures can. Even if you make the noise and your partner wakes you up, you've already made the noise. When the people in the movie are sleeping, it's not like they're right by a waterfall or any other sound source that can distract the creatures should something like that happen. What if you have a nightmare? Because you know, they are living in an apocalyptic situation where monsters are hunting and killing every last survivor. I can imagine that it would be a reason to scare people awake sometimes. I've only had one nightmare where I woke up in a fright once, where I wished myself to wake up because the nightmare was so horrible. It was about my puppy. I mean, she's gone now, I lost her recently. Through old age, don't worry. But this is a side story. I loved her more than anything else, and I dreamt that she was on top of an elevator that I was in, and the elevator went all the way to the top floor and squished her in between the ceiling and the elevator. I know some people hearing me say it might, it might sound funny, but when I was in the dream, it wasn't funny. Don't ask me how she got up there. I didn't put her up there. I just knew she was up there, and I didn't remember until I was near the top floor, and I was freaking the hell out. Then I was able to, with my panic-stricken newfound strength, pull down the cab of the elevator enough to see that my puppy was lying there partially flattened and her eyes partially open. On a side note, it's very interesting when grief hits you. In the nightmare, I didn't cry. I just kept gasping and hyperventilating, and I kept doing these weird screams, but not like those horror screams, just like a freakout noise. Like, ah, ah, like, it was really weird, and I refused to accept the reality that this was real. This couldn't be happening. I could not have lost my puppy, especially this way, the love of my life. And I just kept chanting over and over again, it's not real, it's not real, it's not real. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up now, you're dreaming. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This has to be a dream, it will be a dream. And I woke up and my puppy was lying beside me, but when I woke up, I woke up almost screaming. It was like a really shrieky gasp. I was partially sweating and my heart was racing. It was freaking weird, dude. You only see that in the movies. I hate loving things, seriously, I do, because you're always paranoid, like, what if this happens? In my imagination, things are so vivid, so oftentimes I'll go to places like that. But anyways, side note over. What if I had been in a situation with these flower head things and I woke up like that? They would have heard me. They would have come in and my dog would have been barking. They would have killed me and my dog. 
What if your tummy is rumbling because you're hungry or you have gas? That's not something you can control. You can hold in your farts for as long as possible. But there is the other problem because you either have to let go your farts really quietly, which sometimes isn't really, you know, possible. Because as life would have it, the more you clench, just the louder you actually augment the sound sometimes. But then by holding it in, you successfully cause your stomach to make noises. So... It's like six of one half dozen the other, which basically means you're screwed either way. I just kept thinking to myself, how many people died just because their stomach gurgled at the wrong time? You're petting your stomach and you're drinking water and you're doing everything you can so these monsters don't hear you. Your stomach's like, I'm hungry. And you're like, I, I, I know, but I don't want to die and neither do you. I if we die, we don't get food. But the stomach doesn't care, so he just replies, bitch, I'm hungry. And you're like, shut up. And the stomach is like, oh, so you're not getting me food? Well, I guess we're dying today then. Gurgle, gurgle, motherfucker. Pretty sure there was like 20% of the population that died for these ridiculous reasons. Maybe some people tripped and fell or just tripped over something. Maybe someone had to sniffle or they sneezed involuntarily. Maybe they tried to hold in a sneeze. But you know, it still makes a noise because your cheeks blow up and so does your stomach because the air expands you when you hold in your sneeze, but you still make this implosive noise. Yeah, the alien would slice you in half and they would still hear that. God forbid you get a cold. That's a death sentence from God if you have to cough. And trust me, coughing is involuntary if you're really sick. The next issue that this article had with the movie was uh, why did the creature open its head plate? They say it's a design flaw in the monsters, and I wouldn't necessarily go that far. What if that's the way they make out or something? They have to have some soft bits so they can feel out their partner's feelings. But the issue is when there is a painful noise, their plates open up, which I guess doesn't make any sense because if their hearing is even more sensitive when their plates are open, then why would they open it up when they're exposed to painful noises? I don't know. Why do people run when they're on fire, even though they know they can put out the fire by dropping and rolling? Maybe it's because they're in pain and they can't think clearly, so their body is just spazzing out in response to the pain. We also don't know exactly how this creature's anatomy works, so comparing this creature to us and what we would do instinctively when we hear a loud noise isn't really the way to go, I think. After all, we don't have ears like theirs and we don't have head plates that open up for whatever reason. So if their head plates open up, I think there's more of a reason to why they have that supposed design flaw. Maybe they open up their head plates to make their heads swell up more to cover the area around their ears so they can stop the noise. Or maybe because the noise is so deafening, having their head plates closed causes the sound to reverberate inside of that thick plated mosaic armor, which I'm sure is one of the reasons they can hear so well. So if they open it up, they allow the sound waves to escape. Who knows? The next issue were the newspapers, and a lot of people were talking about this when the movie came out. If the role was already over, as the newspapers were suggesting, how were the newspapers made since printing newspapers is a very loud process? Maybe they did it by hand, but even if that's the case, which is very illogical and improbable, how would they distribute them? I mean, providing these were actually newspaper clippings and not internet articles. Even typing is very loud. Unless you're in a sound booth or an audio center that just traps sound within the building, that wouldn't work. And as I said, even if you could make them, you can't pass them out. And let's say you can. As soon as the citizens get them to read and open them up, they might as well put a gun up to their face and pull the trigger. You're basically sentencing the people to death. The next question is, how were the creatures able to overcome the military? This is something I wondered myself. Providing that this invasion happened all over the world, it wouldn't just be the US military that was combating these aliens. It would be the Chinese military. It would be the Italian military. Okay, wait, this is a stupid question. Did Italy have a military? <laughs> I know you're supposed to assume that every country has a military, but you just never hear the Italian military. It's just weird. You hear the Italian mafia, you know, Italian chefs, you know, Italian movies, but the military was... It's just two words I've never heard together before now. Anyways, does radiation affect these creatures? I understand that they're basically impervious to bullets and things on the outside of their exoskeleton or tank skin or whatever it is they're made of, but with all the leading scientists and soldiers that we have, it's very hard to believe that nobody else figured out that certain frequencies of sound hurt these things. If they already figured out that sound was the issue, as was printed in the newspaper, and the very fact that the newspaper was still able to be printed and distributed, that meant that they were at a time when they could have experimented with hurting the alien's ears. It's not like we don't already have the technology for that kind of thing, or creatures who have great hearing. There is a home device that my uncle showed me many years ago when he built his house over a field. Mice had already populated that field, and so when he built his really big house, they thought automatically that it was their house. Look, a mansion just appeared in the middle of our field in like a few days. So they invited them 
themselves in. Maybe it was a housewarming gift they were leaving for my uncle. But the device that he brought or brought home was this ultrasonic electronic pest and insect repellent. And these devices emit these very high frequency sound waves that are maddening to rodents. I know they work because when I was walking up the steps of my uncle's basement, I saw this little mouse huddled in the corner of the carpet. His eyes were watering like he was going mad. It was just really horrible. And he was like closing his eyes really tight. I started petting him. I know it was stupid, but I love animals. And whatever he was hearing was really hurting his ears. And you could see it because his head was all tucked into his body like he was going deaf. So I told my uncle and he came and grabbed the mouse and put it in a plastic bag, sealed it in the plastic bag, and then... I think he flushed it down the toilet. Who knows? Maybe when it got far enough away, it like ripped through the bag and found its way to freedom and never to go back to that wretched house again. Or, or maybe not. Point being, without the useless story, this is technology that we had to defeat these monsters all along and they should have figured it out way before time. Those thoughts bleed into the next question they had, which is, why didn't the government come up with something? We're just people in general. Not just something to hurt the aliens' ears, but something to distract them so people could live normally. I understand the monsters are very powerful and can tear through metal like hot blades through butter, but there are dams and large industrial facilities, certain things the monsters just don't care about. I don't see them trying to attack the water when it falls, so having a lot of water falling in the area is something that would be great to mask the presence of the humans. Horses and dogs and pigs and sheep, can you imagine? What about honeybees and wasps? Would it go after them? It's not like it can kill them all. They would just swarm the alien and it would try to hit all of them, but it wouldn't be able to, and they would try to sting it in succession because it kept flailing around, but they wouldn't be able to, so I can imagine that kind of thing would just cancel out the other. The next question or issue was about the sand. Where did all the sand come from? The humans used the sand to walk quietly on their bare feet. There is a giant road of sand. I think the question is not so much where the sand came from and how they were able to get that much, but how they were able to even make the road of sand in the first place. I think the very interesting thing thing that I hope they explore in the sequel is how they were able to set up certain things without making noise in a time when making noise would kill you. I mean, you're building something so that you don't make noise, but to build it, you have to make noise. Just pouring the sand would make noise. So what in the ketchup? Unless they had someone driving a remote control tractor some distance away every day, I just don't see how that's possible. Maybe they had fireworks. Maybe they let go a herd of pigs and set them on fire. Who knows? But I wouldn't put it past humans to achieve the impossible. Have you ever seen those bridges that seem to be growing up from the chasm and when you look below, you realize that the water is all the way at the bottom and it would probably take a whole minute and a half for you to fall if you decided that this life was not for you? It would be the perfect launch plate to heaven for someone who wanted out. But even more exciting is the fact that people were able to build something like this. The next issue they had was how the military mishandled the situation. Listen here. Every one of these monster movies, the military and people are always stupid. Let's give the military a chance and say that wherever they were, they were in fact able to take down a lot of these head-cracking alien invaders. And maybe we lost a lot of people before they found out what it was that was a weakness for these creatures. Maybe more of the aliens are dead than we think and the ones that we see in a quiet place fled to the rural areas to get away from all of the military bombarding them. As Screen Rant pointed out, they could have set up sound traps, or maybe they did, unless there's something else that we don't know. What if the military had already figured out how to kill the Quiet Place monsters? Then you would be asking me, well, what in the hell happened to society and civilization then? Good point. But I want you to ask yourself this. What if the Quiet Place monsters that we see in A Quiet Place, the movie, uh, are not the only monsters that arrive there. What if they were something, just something smaller, or just one of the many species that happened to fall onto Earth? These things came in on a meteorite, which makes me believe that their planet was blown up to smithereens or something. It is possible the Quiet Place monsters are the cockroaches or bacteria of whatever planet they came from, and the real danger, which is the reason the humans are almost dead all around the planet, is because of a much bigger or more dangerous species than these creatures. And maybe these creatures don't follow the same rules as the Quiet Place monsters in terms of sound. Maybe they can also see, or maybe they have something else to combat high frequencies. Maybe they hunt using a high frequency deafening noise, and maybe their natural prey are the quiet place monsters, who probably fled to the rural areas on Earth to get away from them. Maybe the military saw these more dangerous things, and they were like, oh shit, <laughs> that's Apocalypticus's father. And that creature, which is more dangerous than the quiet place monsters, used their deafening decibels to kill humans, as well as the aliens that we see portrayed in the movie but they're only congealed like in the city areas for now. Maybe the Quiet Place monster the aliens that we've seen so far are just the baby ones and they have to have sensitive hearing to survive predators from their home world. Maybe the creatures we're looking at in the Quiet Place movie are nowhere near fully grown and there's something else in its adult form that is way more dangerous and already on Earth. The next point posed in the article is why aren't the monsters easily distracted? 
This is a question I had as well. Do they find every single noise annoying? Is noise annoying at all? If something very small can annoy them to the point where they want to kill it dead, why wouldn't the waterfall annoy it? At first, I thought maybe they use it as a hunting mechanism, and then they knew how humans sounded, so they would hunt humans when they would hear them make certain noises or certain animals that they weren't used to seeing. But the little boy at the beginning of the movie was killed because of his toy. Maybe it's because the aliens know that that toy is not a natural noise. Maybe where they came from, they also had water, and when they investigated it, they knew how the water was supposed to sound. I believe based on their behavior that it sounds are not natural or out of the ordinary that annoy these creatures. There's also another theory that I had mentioned in one of our older videos on our channel, the purpose of the aliens and why they hunt humans the way they do. You can check out the Quiet Place playlist if you're interested, but I believe it's natural sounds that come from the earth that wouldn't affect them because they're smart enough to know that water is just water or a lava pit's just a lava pit. The next question and last point is how are humans still alive? It's a great and fantastic question. With everything that has happened in our history, how are we still alive? Humans always persevere, because for every thousand humans that died, there are one to five people who are smarter and more equipped to handle the changing situations this planet has to throw at us. Maybe some of it's luck. Unless, of course, a meter half the size of the Earth crashes into the planet, I don't think it's hard to believe that some humans would still be alive after an apocalyptic event. <laughs> now, they may not be alive for very long, <laughs> but at this point in time when the movie took place, it's not totally unbelievable that they're alive. As of 2020, there are 7.8 billion people on the face of the Earth. I'm pretty sure some are going to make it. Anyways, that's just my two cents to address some of those questions. And trust me, I understand the movie had issues. Hopefully the sequel will address some of those questions. And if not, then there's always room for another movie to cash grab and yet not address the questions once again. I'm kidding. I have faith in John Krasinski. Hopefully he stays that way, full of passion that drove him to make such a masterpiece with A Quiet Place. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.